Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Shovel Knight. Holy crap, it's it's out. The time has come and yada yada. Uh, Shovel Knight is, in case you missed earlier videos or coverage about this game, one of probably the most uh, famous games that's ever been kickstarted. That maybe that's my own personal take on it, but so be it. It made $350,000 on a $75,000 ask, if I remember correctly. Why? Well, because it's, uh, you know, at least purported to be a uh, throwback to the 8-bit and 16-bit era of action platformers. You know, games like Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, games like Mega Man, games like Castlevania, a little bit. There's a lot of games, you know, every second game that came out between the years of, like, 1985 and 1995, uh, before the rise of, you know, 3D gaming was kind of in the genre. And Shovel Knight, I am pleased to say, uh, I played about an hour of so far and is fucking great. It's really good. Weird release timing. It's coming out in the middle of a Steam sale, which I imagine has something to do with the fact that it's also coming out on Wii U and 3DS on the same day, and maybe Nintendo gave them this date and said, this is when it's gonna be. Not an enviable launch date, but if you have extra money in your Steam wallet, consider picking this up. This is not like, eh, it's pretty good. This is, I am, I am really fucking impressed. Remember when, you know, Capcom brought back classic Mega Man for Mega Man 9 and Mega Man 10? It's early. I haven't played a ton of it so far, but so far I would say that uh, Shovel Knight rivals uh, the uh, the quality of Mega Man 9 and Mega Man 10, which I don't say lightly. I enjoyed both of those games immensely, but we're gonna get started here. We're gonna start on a, uh, a new file. As you can see, I've got like a 50-minute file that I've played so far. I also played this game uh, in uh, its earlier states uh, to promote the Kickstarter, and <laughs> I can't tell you how relieved I am uh, to have, you know, supported a Kickstarter publicly, which is a very risky thing to do sometimes. I'm gonna skip by the story, by the way, when it comes up to avoid spoiling too much. Let, rest assured, there is a story, and it's more meaningful than it is in a lot of games, uh, you know, of this type as well. I wonder if there's something on the left here, but I, what I was gonna say is, um, Rest assured, uh, I am extremely stoked to have uh, done like a promotional video, sort of. It was a let's look at, but it was like, you know, help out the Kickstarter, make sure it gets, uh, you know, going. Not that I necessarily, or not that they necessarily needed that from me, but anyway. Uh, and then it comes out and it's it's fucking great. It's, it's, it's fantastic. It's not like, what, if nothing else, I want to not bury the lead. What I want to say here, before I even explain what's going on, is that this is one of the the only games that doesn't like take a retro style and is like we're inspired by this but we kind of pale in comparison right there, there's a lot of games like that I'm not gonna name names necessarily but you can probably think of some that you know harken back to a day when games were simpler or you know more difficult but less complex and it was about you know hardcore gaming and stuff like that whatever um, but they didn't quite match up with the uh, their inspirations I would not hesitate to say that uh, Shovel Knight at least thus far seems to match up very admirably um, with the, uh, you know, NES and uh, SNES and other games from that era, games that it is, um, aping, or, you know, that it's inspired by. Uh, I played DuckTales NES for the first time recently on the, uh, the NLSS that we did, Northern Lion Live Super Show, and I would say that Shovel Knight is far and away better than DuckTales. So let's explain what the heck we've got going on here now that I've angered, you know, half of my fan base. Uh, we're Shovel Knight. We get gold. There's a little bit of, like, not farming, but, you know, buying stuff that happens in this game. It's a mix of an action platformer and an RPG, because there are town mechanics where we can, like, upgrade our person and our weapon and whatnot. Um, we have a life meter, which you can see. Uh, right now I can take eight hits. Each one of those typically represents, you know, it's like the Binding of Isaac. If you get hit once, you lose half of a red circle. Uh, except some enemies will take a full red circle. We also have, uh, 30 item power right now, and item power, if you've ever played Castlevania, it's basically you get an active item and you can fire it until your number, number of bottles goes down to zero. So this is, um, oh, they won't actually let me destroy it. This is a checkpoint. You actually can do a cool, like, risk-reward thing, because money is actually important so that you get stronger later in the game. Um, you can actually break the checkpoints that you come across, and it's super risky, obviously, because then you don't get to use those checkpoints. But if you do it, then you, uh, also... Uh, get a ton of extra gold. So that's the way that you would get the most gold on a level. So we're gonna play a couple levels of Shovel Knight here. We have a few different attacks. Um, be careful here. Um, we have a few different attacks um, that we can accomplish at our disposal. One of them is the, you know, DuckTales NES style, like, pogo sticking that we've got going on. Very useful for bouncing on things, like these bubbles, for example. If we just try to, um, you know, walk into them, it's not gonna work out too well for us. Uh, we also have just a, a shovel kind of like swipe that we've got going on here, which we can use, you know, as a physics-based thing to knock in enemies, yada yada. Or we can just smack enemies in the face and that'll work out pretty well as well. There are a ton of secrets 
in Shovel Knight. Uh, you know, even though you see me digging up stuff, uh, this is not Magicite. And it's a very well-designed game, but what I mean by that Magicite thing is that it's not, you know, this is not a survival game. Oh, that was stupid me. Um, like, just even this screen was where, I, when I was playing it off camera, I was like, this shit is designed really well. You come down here first and you're like, oh, it's a dead end. So you go smack that wall and it explodes and you learn some walls are destructible. Then you come up here and you're like, yada yada, free treasure, and you blow it up and there's enemies in it. Now you've learned that there can be destructible walls with enemies in them as well. Very deliberate design choices that are, you know, subtle, but at the same time, uh, really go a long way towards communicating what you can actually do in the game. It's, you know, none of this stuff is done by accident, so uh, I, wa I wanted to, uh, to mention it. Now, again, this is another important room. They just introduced destructible walls. Now we can come in here and uh, get that piece of sheet music. What does sheet music do? I guess I'll just tell you. We also learn, if you uh, pay very close attention, that there can be mineral deposits on the wall there, for example. Um, basically, music is a collectible, um, but it doesn't just, you know, a lot of games are like, you found this piece of music, congratulations. Um, you know, you can go look at that in the uh, audio library if you want to. In this, you actually do get a, uh, a tangible financial reward for it when you go back to the town. And I'll talk a little bit more about the town system when we actually get there. Another game that obviously did, um, you know, music stuff very well with respect to collectibles is Assassin's Creed 4, but um, a lot of uh, other games, I would say, don't necessarily do fantastically when it comes to stuff like that. Anyway, uh, speaking of still learning stuff, whenever you find a silver platter, it's uh, typically one of two options. It's either a delicious walled chicken, or it could be a, uh, an explosive bomb as well, which would be bad. I wonder if I can destroy this one. Nah, it's a tutorial level. We'll play one non-tutorial level and you'll, um, you'll get to experience some other stuff there. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of been glowing, or I've kind of been glowing in my praise for Shovel Knight so far. Sincerely, uh, really, really very impressed with this game. You know, a lot of stuff that comes out, and I've I mentioned this in a little bit uh, less depth, I guess, but uh, a lot of the stuff that comes out that is like wearing its inspirations on its sleeve is content to be imitative, if that makes sense. And Shovel Knight is imitative, you know? It, it It's uh, an experience that feels a lot like a game like Mega Man. That's the one I'm comparing it closest to, kind of because my experience more lies with Mega Man than any other uh, action platformer. Uh, but it, it feels really, really good as well. It does a lot of original stuff on its own. And, uh, you know, it, it's... I, I hesitated to say this, and I thought about it coming in. Am I going to say this? And I figured, well, you know, I would rather end up being wrong. Where is that ladder? Like, wait, how do we get up to that ladder to get that treasure chest? I missed that on my last time, too. Oh, I bet it's... Yeah, right there. All right. Well, we can't get that treasure chest then. Um, yeah, when I was thinking about what I'm going to say during the video, I was like, am I going to say this? Is it okay to say this, even though I've only played about an hour? But I'm going to say it, because this is what I'm really feeling right now, and I think people deserve to know that. Uh, I think Shovel Knight right now feels like it could easily be one of the best games of the year, and I know what you're thinking. Northern Lion, how could you possibly say that a, uh, a game that is not a roguelike roguelikeish dungeon crawler or platformer could be among the best games of the year? Surely you must be joking. No, sincerely, um, Shovel Knight feels really, uh, really special, and, uh, as levels go on, it just feels more and more special. Like, this might look kind of samey right here, but, uh, they do some, they do some interesting stuff as we get further and further along, which is really cool. Now, as you might expect, uh, we will die if we fall into this pit. So I'm not gonna give the, oh, I'm not gonna give the dragon, uh, the chance to do that by using my earlier strategy. Usually, there's a couple of mini-bosses on levels like this, uh, or on any level, I should say. A couple of mini-bosses before the actual boss. Uh, usually you get a, uh, a meal after you defeat them. So I hope that's the case here, because I did really badly. Uh, yeah, we did get some extra HP there, that's fine. Okay. Now, you gotta be careful, because the main way that I die in this game is not from running out of HP, even though it looked like that might happen against that dragon. The main way I die in this game is from getting knocked off the edge, similar to the way that, you know, you get knocked off the edge in Mega Man or something like that, just by knockback from enemies, but... Now, the game does some cool stuff with, like, um... The background, I mean, you can sort of see it here, but there's, uh, these slimes blend in with the grass. The grass is actually in the foreground. This is something I don't think I've ever seen a game really do before, but, um, it will... We might not see too much more of that in levels, but there are levels in the game. Uh, this is a secret over here. Always go left. It's just, it's a foolproof way to, to find secrets, but, um, there's other levels that play around with silhouettes and shadows, much in the same way that, you know, like, you, you play with, like, light and darkness in something like the Spark Mandrill level in Mega Man X. I'm a big fan of these kinds of games, even though I did shit-talk DuckTales, like, not even five minutes ago, but, um... 
Shovel Knight, you know, as, as a pseudo connoisseur of the genre, Shovel Knight does a fantastic job of not only uh, being evocative of the classic, you know, genre hallmarks. Uh, I'm scared of picking up that. Uh, but also in, uh, you know, being truly remarkable, remarkable in and of itself. So we have a boss fight here. The boss fights are uh, a strength of the game so far, very much so. Martin Lawrence says, I knew you'd show your face sooner or later, the Cerulean coward. Turn back, Shovel Knight. There's nothing here for you anymore. Stand aside, Black Knight. I've no quarrel with you. I must return to the Tower of Fate. Plus, your Rotten Tomato score is terrible. Your time away has dulled your senses. Can't you see? This entire valley's been conquered by the Enchantress and her invincible knights of the Order of No Quarter stand between you and the tower. But none of that matters because anyone after the Enchantress has to go through me. Steal thy shovel. So, this is, um... This is something that a lot of games do. But the enemy that we're fighting here, it's basically our, uh, our Balrog from Cave Story, or, you know, our, um, our Vile from Mega Man X. It's an enemy that we're gonna, uh, fight against more than one time, so we learn a little bit more. I mean, let's put it this way, if you've played classic games before in this genre, you're probably familiar with the fact that you can, um, reflect that projectile back. A little bit of a, like, a Super Mario Land 2, uh, six golden coins vibe going on here. We're pretty close to finishing the level, and we actually will get, like, a feat unlocked, which are kind of like the game's version of, you know, extrinsic achievements. Um, or actually, in intrinsic achievements, because, uh, some of them aren't recognized by Steam, I think. But we get that kill, and, uh, what I will say is that unlike, you know, a Castlevania, well, not Castlevania is not necessarily the best example here, but unlike, um, a Mega Man game, you don't get a power, you don't get upgraded from killing bosses, so it's not like you beat this guy, and then he's like, I'm gonna give you my fire power, and then you beat Ice Knight as a result of that in the next world. It's not like that. You kind of have a little bit more freedom with how you upgrade yourself. So there is actually a story going on in Shovel Knight, and that's not necessarily rare for the genre, um, especially when I'm talking about games like Castlevania, but basically, you used to be paired with Shield Knight. You're Shovel Knight, she's Shield Knight. You used to, you know, have a little bit of a romantic thing, it's implied, but also, you know, you would be professionals as well, but she was kidnapped. Ooh, we did it. Um, she was kidnapped by the Enchantress, or killed in the Tower of Fate. And now, um, you know, that sent you into a life of solitude, but you're coming out because the Enchantress who, you know, made all this happen in the first place is, um, is stirring to life. So, uh, essentially you're gonna have to fight all of her knights and then kill her to keep the land safe. And maybe there'll be some kind of reunion at the end. I have no idea, because I've only beaten, like, three of these castles. So, the story's- it's good! It's actually surprisingly good for a, uh, a game of this type. So, there is actually, uh, a, a town going on here. Now, you don't actually go inside of the doors, but, you know, as you saw, I earned money. So we're gonna talk to some people and get some stuff done here. It's actually a pretty good representation of, like, a living town, which is really- Remarkable. Again, not a whole lot of games in the genre do this. The bard says, Hail, traveler! I am but a simple bard and have a big problem. I've lost all my music sheets. My entire repertoire lays scattered across the land. If you ever find a music sheet, return it to me and I shall reward you handsomely. Well, you have two music sheets. Magnificent. And he gives me 500 gold for each one. So you found the rival. Black Knight has fine musical taste. Should have studied composition, but then I suppose I'd be the one with the rival. Now that I have this music sheet, I can perform it for you anytime. Just ask. So, we'll, we'll talk to him, I guess. Um... Play me a song. Why don't you play me, uh... Why don't you play me Shovel Knight? I'm just trying to see what else there is. Is there the rival? I like the main theme. Anyway, um... I just wanted to take a moment to, to talk about the, uh... The audiovisual stuff that goes on here. Because it really is excellent. Like, the this, the music in the game is super, super evocative of that stuff from... Or the, the games that it's kind of drawing from, right? It's really catchy, really reminiscent of classics like, you know, Dr. Wily's theme from uh, Mega Man 2, for example. Or Dr. Wily 1, I should say, um, from Mega Man 2. Uh, really good music, and visually the game looks great. It, it takes, obviously, a lot from the NES style, but it doesn't feel like a cheap recreation. And certainly, uh, it looks a little bit more like a Super Nintendo game than an NES game, let's put it that way. But it runs really smoothly, the frame rate feels excellent, uh, as you might expect. But it, it, it makes a big difference in the gameplay. Uh, so, we have these guys up here. What we have to do is talk to this uh, young gentleman down here, the Godetician, and the Godetician will allow us to buy a meal ticket. And the way that meal tickets work is basically you buy a meal ticket and then you can choose to upgrade either your magical capacity or your overall HP. So I'm gonna choose to upgrade my overall HP. And he will produce something here. You keep it going. There we go. And we'll uh, go eat it and this will make our maximum HP get higher. You might even be able to afford one more meal ticket, actually. And, uh, yeah, we can because we got so much money from that last area. Uh, so let's upgrade our magic as well. Oh, no relics. I have to find relics. 
You know what? I can't actually do that, but let's talk to this guy instead. And we'll just upgrade our maximum life as much as we possibly, possibly can. And then we'll move on to another level. There actually is more stuff going on in this town, but I don't necessarily um, want to tackle it. I just want to give you a general idea of what's going on. There's other merchants and stuff like that. Um, and there's also one quick little secret which I'll take care of here. Oh, we didn't get anything for that, but um, hey, you, lady, you come back in this general direction over here. Thank you. Um, seriously, lady, thank you. Uh, there's a piece of music up here which I wanted to get. Sweet. Okay, so we'll move on. Now there is a little bit of like a, a Super Mario Brothers 3 thing going on here. Uh, where we have a, an overworld, and as of right now it's linear. We have to beat King Knight. If we don't beat King Knight, we can't progress. But, uh, eventually we'll have a few more choices as to what we can do, and we'll have a little bit more, uh, ability to move around. This is super inspired by Mario 3, uh, because there's even gonna be, like, a, almost like a Hammer Bros type enemy that takes up space on the overworld, and that gives us a special level, which gives us some extra treasure. Anyway, we are going to proceed. And, uh, what I like about this is that every level has a, a very different aesthetic as well, and it kind of wears its inspiration on its sleeves. Like, uh, there's another level that coming later, which is very much, uh, it seems at least kind of like an homage, or at least a head nod to, uh, Ghouls and Goblins, or Ghosts and Goblins, and, uh, or Ghouls and Ghosts. I always forget. Some combination of, of Goblins and Ghouls involved here. Uh, so we're gonna try to play a little bit more aggressively on this one, uh, and, and we'll see if we can get more money as a result, but you'll see what I mean as we move a, a little bit further and further along here. Um, one thing I will say is that as of right now, the, the major complaint I have about Shovel Knight, and it really is the only one, is that uh, it seems a little easy. I have had, um, I have died, I've had bosses that have killed me, I've had one boss that killed me a few times, but certainly in comparison to a game like, you know, Mega Man 9 or Mega Man 10, uh, it, it's much, much easier, and maybe there are difficulty settings, I haven't seen them, or maybe you unlock like a New Game Plus or something like that, um, but I haven't seen that either, I wonder, oh, no, nothing over there. Um, but right now, it's it's been a little bit easier than you might expect for a game of this uh, genre. And that's okay, it's still been a lot of fun regardless, but I do find it a, a little bit on the easier side so far. Mind you, uh, you know, still pretty early on, within the first hour, uh, still have had, you know, one sticking point. Oh, yeah, that was stupid of me. Still have had one sticking point uh, with one particular boss, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. Maybe things will change. Maybe by the end of the game, I'll be saying, like, why did I ever say that it was too easy? So, uh, there should be, like, a meal here. We'll see. Yeah, we don't need it, but uh, we're going to play super risky. What I mean by that is, you know, we can make the difficulty a little bit harder on ourselves by picking up some extra gems, but this destroys our checkpoints. So it's almost like in... Um, you know, Runner 2, Bit Trip Runner 2, uh, how you could uh, completely skip by checkpoints if you wanted to. Of course, at incredible risk to yourself, uh, because you didn't get the, the value of having that checkpoint in the first place. We're just basically baiting this guy into doing his uh, shield up top, and then we're coming down low and hitting him, uh, which is faster than just doing counter attacks, I think, which also work out, you know, fairly well. As you can see, well, that one didn't work out so well, did it? Work with me here, dude. I need you to need you to come out. Thank you. That's actually quite a good deal of money there. Uh, yeah, so, you know, it's a high-risk, high-reward strategy of playing, and if you're finding things a little bit too easy, maybe that's something you want to do. I mean, I'm not used to playing... I, let's put it this way. Most of my experience in this genre uh, comes down to Mega Man games. So, to uh, have so many checkpoints within a level, levels that are not particularly long, you know, maybe like 10 to 15 minutes each, uh, is kind of unusual to me. I'm, I'm not used to there being so many. Uh, so, it is, uh, it's nice to be able to augment it and to be rewarded for it, you know, to actually get some kind of tangible financial reward. Of course, that reward goes to making the game easier later, but I don't think that's that big of a deal. And there are, uh, optional challenges, and the optional challenges make things pretty difficult. This is one of them right here, so we're gonna try to get to the other side here. Um, and it actually worked, and this is quite a secret right here. We just get in there, and there actually is a, uh, rotating panel. So we can use that rotating panel to come over here, and oh, I didn't even see those the first time through. Uh, we can pick up this stuff, and then out of this treasure chest, we will pop a merchant. Which is weird, but the merchant will actually sell us uh, our first item. We could get another item before this, but uh, this is the first one that I've gotten over the course of this run. So this is our... Uh, gotta stand pretty much perfect there. There we go. Um, this is our fire rod, so by pressing up and X, I should mention I'm using the, uh, 360 controller, by the way. By pressing up and X, we can shoot a fireball, 
Ooh, that was scary. It costs us a, uh, a certain amount of bottles in order to do it, but we get those back whenever we pick up bottles or pots off the ground. So yeah, um, that, you know, it's a little bit of a Castlevania type thing going on there. I didn't even mention uh, the controls of the game so far. That's a good thing. Uh, I, I haven't had to mention them. They're fine. Um, let's see if we can knock this over there, maybe. Eh, didn't quite work. Uh, sometimes they feel a little weird, but I think it's because, you know, it, it sounds like kind of a cop-out, but you're using a shovel, so, you know, you get a lot of, uh, a lot of pushback. And, uh, you know, you, you do get bounced a lot by enemies when you take damage against them. But, you know, it, it controls fine. Uh, certainly, a kiss of death would be if it controlled poorly. And, uh, it does not control poorly. It, to it controls totally okay. It does take a little bit of getting used to, though. Um, because it's not like the other games that maybe you've spent dozens or even hundreds of hours with. So, there is a, um, checkpoint down here. As you might expect, I am not going to, uh, actually use that checkpoint. I will just break it instead. Now, a lot of people are gonna be wondering, what happens if you die? Do you have lives or something like that? Well, not really. It almost has, and people always get on my ass whenever I make this comparison. I'm not comparing... Oh, I'm gonna... I thought I would get pushed in the hole there. Um, I'm not comparing the game to Dark Souls, necessarily. What I am saying is that there's a little bit of a Dark Soulsian mechanic going on. Uh, when you die, you drop three money bags uh, that have a proportional amount of money depending on how much money you had when you died, right? Um, when you come back to life, you can go get that money. Um, and, and then it's like picking up your bloodstain in Dark Souls only, you know, financially speaking. I have never encountered a situation where I, like, ran out of lives. I almost wonder maybe if you run out of money, you have to restart or something like that. Or maybe you just keep playing until you say, like, fuck it, it's not financially viable for me anymore. I'm going to restart the level. Um, so there, there don't seem to be incredible... Now nah, that works. Uh, incredible negative repercussions for dying a lot beyond, you know, losing out financially. So maybe you want to replay the levels later. Uh, but in any case, uh, that that's how... I've understood the mechanic to work so far, at the very least. Um, it's it's kind of neat. It's unusual. Uh, some people are going to have a problem with that, I think, specifically because, you know, it's not like Mega Man, or it's not like other games like this that have, like, a life system, and then you game over and maybe you have a password or something like that. I don't know. Um, I can sneak through here. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm of two minds about it. Because, you know, on the one hand, you say, like, oh, it's supposed to be like these old games, yada, yada, yada. Um, this is different, and that is thus, therefore, bad, just as a result of the fact that it's not the same. But a lot of the difficulty... Ooh, I didn't realize you were alive. Uh, a lot of the difficulty in those old school games, as much as I love them, as much as I love a game like, you know, Mega Man 2, comes from trial and error. Uh, and from not realizing that you can just use the Metal Blade to accomplish everything, I guess. But, um, yeah, you know, it comes from trial and error. It's okay to say that that's okay. It's okay to say I'm okay with trial and error, but I think it's also okay to acknowledge that maybe some people would rather they be a little bit less trial and error. -y. I I fall probably more on the former side, and you know, would probably find myself uh, a little bit more enjoying, although I have been enjoying the game greatly, uh, a, a more like classical life and uh, continue kind of system with game overs and, and whatnot. Um, but I've uh, I've enjoyed this a great deal. Um, I don't even want to say in spite of it, because it makes it sound like more of a negative than I actually consider it to be. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, with that in mind, I've still enjoyed the game a great deal. So, uh, it's a bit of a pet peeve, or not a pet peeve, but a bit of like a personal distinction. But I think it's, uh, it's if that's what we're going to talk about, you know, the ease of the game and the fact that it doesn't have like a hard game over system. Uh, if that's the only complaint, then things are working out very well for us. I hate to do this. I would love to be the badass who beats this level of Shovel Knight without using any save points, but I have to. I have to use this one because there is a pretty realistic chance that I could get hurt um, uh, and, and die on this one. So I'm going to try to rescue this music. I really love how many... Um, how many... Uh, what was I going to say? Secrets there are uh, in the game. I mean, if you know where to look or you know the methodology of where you should be looking, it's pretty easy to figure out where they are. That's not the point. The point is that they're there, and each one makes you feel a little bit better about yourself. So yeah, I'm not going to break this one, because we have like a Mega Man style, um, you know, disappearing platforms thing ahead of us. And uh, it gets harder, because those cauldrons are going to present a major issue moving forward. Alright, so we're going to wait for the perfect time here. There is totally controller support in the game, in case you 
uh, did not hear me earlier. I'm using the 360 controller. I'm even using the 360 controller D-pad. And yes, I understand that that makes me a uh, total casual scum. So whatever. I should point out also um, uh, that if you think that this level looks a little bit too easy, keep in mind this is my... Well, you know what? We should check that wall just in case there's a secret. This is my second time through it. Oh, there's some secrets hidden inside of these uh, banners here. Nice. Um, yeah, keep in mind that um, this is my second time through this level. And this level actually is kind of easy. The, uh, I know the dodging pattern there. The more difficult level is the level that comes after this. But I'm not going to show that off unless I, you know, choose to do a Let's Play later. Because for now, I want you guys to go out and basically, you know, to, to pull the veil back. Fucking buy Shovel Knight for yourself and experience it for yourself. Because it is awesome. Now, this checkpoint we can probably break guilt-free. And, um, you know, there's no leaderboard system or something like that. I just want to know that I'm doing all right. All right, so I'm going to skip... Uh, over all the dialogue here. We're fighting King Knight, and uh, all the bosses have their own, you know, unique personalities and characteristics. King Knight's pretty easy. He's got some special moves. You can see the boss health bar over on the right side, by the way. Um, he's got some special moves that are a little bit problematic. He'll do like a confetti, um, confetti thing in a second. Uh, yeah, those trumpets, which is really annoying because the confetti on the way down actually cuts you. But we can actually shoot the confetti down ourselves. Uh, and he's got kind of like a chill penguin attack there, as you can see, but he's dead. That was, like, by far the easiest I've ever had against him. So, we'll pick up a decent amount of gold there, enough gold to upgrade ourselves again. And, uh, I'm gonna say that that does it for this Let's Look at of Shovel Knight. This game is awesome. If you are at all into, uh, games like this, you know, action platformers, Mega Man Castlevania, Zelda 2, etc., etc. I, I would totally recommend picking this up. Even at full price, even though it's the Steam sale, I can't recommend this enough. It's 15 bucks, at least the pre-order is 15 bucks. Um, so there will be a link to pick that up in the video description below. Don't sleep on this if you want to actually, uh, you know, play it for yourself. Because this is going to end up, I think, being one of the most, uh, you know, unifying game experiences of the year. I think everybody's going to love this. Everybody who plays it is going to love it, at least. Uh, and uh, I would strongly encourage you to check it out, you know. Avoid buying two $40 games that are not as good as this, good as this, that have been discounted in the Steam sale. You know, $40 down to like $750 or something like that. Put that money towards getting Shovel Knight and uh, actually complete a game in your Steam library for once because it's fucking good enough to do it. In any case, will be a link in the video description below to check that out on Steam. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Really does. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.